All right. Hi, everyone. Welcome. This is Kristen from MissHauser.com, and I am so excited to be joined today by Natalie Schutz. Natalie is a second year instructional coach in a private school setting, and I'm really looking forward to hearing and learning from some of, I think, Natalie's really unique experiences as a coach and some from some of her stories from the field. So, hey, Natalie, how are you? Thank you hey, so much Chris. for being here this morning. Hey, thanks for inviting me. I'm very excited to be with you all. Um, this is probably one of my biggest goals this year is to reach out and to meet new people. And so with technology, Twitter, um, I've been following Chris Kristen's website for a while, and I'm just so excited to be chatting with you this morning. So thank Absolutely. You. Thanks, Natalie. All right. How about we jump in, Natalie, with you you just kind of telling us a bit about yourself, your background, how you got started with instructional coaching. Sure. So this is my second year, as Kristen said. I am a technology and instructional coach. Um, we are one campus at our school. We're a private independent school in Lafayette, Louisiana. And basically, we have three campuses. We have a preschool with pre-K three through kindergarten, an elementary school, first through seventh, and then a high school, eighth through twelfth grade. Wow. They're all over town. They're not at the same location. So it kind of makes it hard. But this year, I'm branching out and working instead of just the high school, which I was last year, but I'm branching out and working with those elementary teachers, the preschool teachers. Actually, this week, I'm very excited. I'm going to the preschool for three days wow. and just observing and being with those teachers. Um, so this is my second year doing that. But before, I was a second grade teacher, an eighth grade teacher, um, a kindergarten assistant. So I kind of have all these grade levels yeah. just in my belt. Um, and so I really... I fell in love with working with teachers and professional development. I guess when outside people coming in, helping with professional development, and I just thought, oh, maybe that could be me one day, sharing my expertise, collaborating. And that's when I fell in love with instructional coaching and kind of researched it. I found an online program for classes at ULL, which is okay. University of Louisiana at okay. Lafayette. Started in March of 2013 and finished in December 2013. Wow. Okay. So, so a lot of great kind of info on your background there. Let me back up just for a second, Natalie. So, so did you, were you kind of your, for your transition into coaching, did you teach at the school where you're coaching at or how did you make a move into that coaching position? I did not. I was at a, another independent um, private school, just like the one that I am today. It was a little bit smaller. Um, but whenever I started this instructional coaching, I was going to teach again and just be a lead teacher for another year. But when this job opportunity came up, um, it was closer to home. Uh -huh. It was about 15 minutes away from home instead of 35, 40 minutes. So I just knew it was the right place at the right time. And the administrator who contacted me, she created this instructional coaching position. Okay. She, we had similar backgrounds, similar interests. You know, she was a math teacher. I taught eighth grade math. She moved into administration when they needed her. And yeah. she just had this passion about instructional coaching. And part of her job as an administrator was coaching them. She just ran out of time to do that. Okay. So she really wanted to fill that position with someone who had the background of educational technology and instructional practices for her school. Okay. So, so she invited you into the position. Yes, she did. Great. So, and I, I went in open to teach at the lower school, at the elementary school, and that's when that director sent my name to the upper school campus because they were looking for an instructional coach and um, a strategist at their campus. So cool. that's how I got there. And you said you did receive some training for coaching. Yes, I did. Um, UL had an online program. I had my master's already. So I, after undergraduate, I had my undergraduate in Bachelor of Science Elementary or Early Childhood Education. Uh -huh. And I went back shortly after for my master's in Educational Technology Leadership. And so after that, then I realized UL had a program. It was you know, the university in my hometown. So I just researched, and they had four courses in instructional coaching. Okay. So we started that course in March, and I remember it was a seven-week hybrid course for each class. Okay. And, and we dived in with Jim Knight's instructional coaching book, and basically that's where, you know, all the pedagogy and all the, the methods that he's used, that's kind of where it all started with that first class. That's so great to hear because I know that so many of us go into coaching without any formal training like that. And so many, you know, Miss Hauser readers contact me and say, 
how did you learn about coaching? Where, where, where's the formal training available? And I think, you know, it, it depends from state to state. I know that Colorado yeah. doesn't, doesn't offer any specific coaching training, but that's great to hear that you have that available in your state and that that may be available elsewhere. Do you Definitely. feel like that formal training really prepared you for your, for your work as a coach, Natalie? I don't think so, but I was intrigued to learn more. And so basically I went out looking and it was just a great job. You know, my the school that I work for now provides a lot of professional development. We're very fortunate, the teachers and the staff, the administrators. So basically whenever I read Jim Knight's book and I kind of researched him after that. And so he had a training in Kansas that I went to, I guess, when yeah. I started 2014 last uh-huh. year in Uh October. And so I flew out to Kansas and spent three days there, met a lot of instructional coaches that had real, you know, background experiences of how they jumped in from being a teacher and kind of the struggles they had. So learning from other people, I feel like that's how I've learned the most. And even though I have the methods and the background of all those pedagogies and all that, I just feel like talking to others, getting their experiences, how they cope or how they work with resilient teachers, you know, resistant yeah, teachers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I think that's helped me the most. Um, I totally agree. That community of, of coaches is so important. And, you know, mm-hmm. unfortunately, unless you seek out experiences like you did as far as attending that gym night training, which I've always wanted to go to, and it's on my list. But it can sometimes be difficult for coaches, you know, to kind of find that community. Sometimes it just feels like an island of one. Um, yes. So I know that's kind of a struggle for, for coaches at times. And I had that my first year because I was the only instructional coach, the instructional strategist for our school. And so I worked closely with the administrator who created this position because she had so much expertise on what she wanted as my role. Um, but I think, and our public schools in uh, where I'm from, they had instructional coaches, but due to budget cuts, I think they limited them or there was one coach per 10 schools, you know, so they were really tied up with all these schools. So I kind of reached out to the private school um, coaches and yeah. technology integrators and those kind of people just to fall back on and say, okay, what, how are you sharing new ideas with your teachers and staff? So kind of learning from others, I find that was the biggest, you know, help in my field. Yeah, so, that, that's so. great advice, Natalie. Yes. So since you kind of mentioned your, um, your principal or your administrator, I know that Natalie <laughs> and I were kind of chatting earlier and she's had a bit of a transition with leadership in the past year. So can you tell us a bit more about how you work with your principal, um, how she supports you in your role of coaching and, and the coaching that you have going on at your school? Sure. So our leadership at our school is a little bit differently. We have a head of school, and I'm a visual person, so we have a head of school, and then we have three campuses. So we each have a director, which is like a principal. So we have the the preschool uh, director, the elementary and middle school director, and then we have the high school director. And so when I was hired on the director of the high school, um, she created this position, and so we work closely together. You know, we try to gather data with Google Forms and all the Google tools, collaborate it with Google Docs Uh and everything. She really had a a clear sense of my job and my role and what she wanted it to look at. And this year she's moved on to go to a different school. And so basically we had two other people that were already at the school that jumped up to her her role. Mm -hmm. And so they're kind of sharing her role. So one person I talked to about budget and if it's available, you know, for teacher X to go to this professional development or what can we do for this teacher to learn more about um, a classroom management strategy or so forth. And then the other person, I kind of, she goes in and observes the teacher. So I kind of talk with her. So there's always collaboration and communication yeah. at talking with an administrator or if I find something online, you know, I always forward it to them. If I find a great leadership email, you know, I send it to them. Our head of school is very proactive for ongoing learning and professional development. Okay. And so he, he's, this is his second year, but he has a clear vision of what a coach should look like. But we're trying to move from the three campuses to like just straight a uh, one school where there's no divisions, you know? So yeah. really, for me to get out there and go work with the other administrators, the preschool director and the elementary school. So that's beginning this year. I've been more 
proactive and, oh, here's a second grade activity. Even though I, my job, I'm at the high school right now, uh -huh. I, I still communicate and share ideas with those other teachers just to build those relationships. I'm going to talk about that later um, today, but building those relationships, even with a simple email, hey, I found this great second grade activity on Twitter. I was a second grade teacher. You know, I would have loved to done, have done this in my classroom. Yeah. You know, what is what are your thoughts on this? You know, even a two sentence email reply, yep. just building those relationships. That's right. So basically just, you know, that's where I'm finding myself this year. And I mean, I can't believe it's almost February, but mm -hmm. just, you know, and, and we have about, I want to say 35 teachers at the high school. Our elementary and middle schools are is larger. And then our preschool, wow. probably about 20 teachers. Okay. So I want to say maybe 100 140 teachers. Oh my gosh. You know, and or or just staff in general, you know, oh administrators gosh. and teachers. And it's just so, you? Just me for right now. So, um and wow. I have a lot of help. Um a lot of our staff like to share out. So, we did a professional development the day we came back from the New Year's break. Okay. And so a lot of our staff who went to conferences shared out and so we had like PD rotations. So, there's other teachers and staff that want to share out and share their expertise or knowledge. So I do have a lot of help in that regards, but that's great. Um, and we kind of do, and I'm going to talk about that. We kind of do things a little bit differently than the public school systems, but I kind sure. of, you know, if I um, actually met a friend on Twitter, I think Sonia, and we've been sharing ideas and, you know, trying to collaborate on a schedule. I looked at her schedule great. to see how I can tweak that. So even though we don't do exactly the same thing as a public school system, I, w I like to incorporate those ideas just so, and I'm going to talk about that a little later. Great. So. Super smart. So a couple of, uh, I, I guess, two key words that I heard you share, Natalie, mm -hmm. as far as working with, you know, your director, your principal, whoever it is that, that is in that role of, of, of supporting you as an instructional coach. So you mm -hmm. said, I communicate and I collaborate with them regularly, right? Yes. And, you know, d despite of where you are and kind of developing that role with your principal, keeping those two factors at the forefront of your mind, collaborating, community, communicating on a consistent basis, I think, and you would agree, is so important to really strengthening the work that you do with your principal or director. Definitely. I think, you know, and it's hard as a teacher, I know, to go and communicate if something is not right or, you know, something mm -hmm. needs to be changed. So that's where I come in and talk with a teacher. Okay, how do you expect this to be? Or, you know, get their mm -hmm. feedback and their you know, advice and then kind of go to the administration team and say, you know, this isn't working for this teacher. Yeah. And obviously keep it confidential if they're, sure. you know, if they don't want to share their name, but really just, you know, communicate and be the in-between person, but also with, you know. That's right. So you're advocating for the teachers as well. Yes. Advocating yes. is another strong word that Jim Knight said. I forgot about that. So Natalie, you mentioned you know, this, the scheduling piece and you, you work mm -hmm. at a very large school, you're one coach with a lot of teachers to support. And since instructional coaching can look different from school to school, district and di to district, and you are working in a private school setting, can you describe, you know, maybe like a typical day or the role that you do? How, how do you build out your schedule to know, you know, do you do coaching cycles or how do you support teachers in your work? And I know you're also a technology coach, too. Mm -hmm. So if you can give us just a little bit of a picture, that would so, be great. So, yeah, so it's different every day. You know, like I said, this week I'm going to the elementary, um, the preschool, sorry. Yes. And so I'm going to be, you know, their start time is different than the high school start time. Uh -huh. So it kind of very varies week to week or day to day. But basically, you know, I go in the same hours as the teacher. I kind of check my emails, see what's going on. I also do Kurzweil testing. It's a software program for our dyslexic students. So okay. I have to be on standby in case there's a test for that. Um, I do some administrative duties. If okay. a teacher's out, I find a sub for them. Okay. Um, I also... Um, just basically I'm on standby. I mean, that's the only way that I can think of it. You know, I have a lot of professional development emails coming in, so I'll read mm -hmm. through those. That's probably majority of my time. See on Twitter, you know, if there's any new ideas for teachers. Okay. Um, if teachers make appointments with me ahead of time. Okay. Um, right now my desk is in the library. We don't really have a lot of books. We're, we're going to a digital library. Oh, wow. So, if a teacher needs me, they just stop by or they'll schedule an appointment with me. Okay. Um, and so, so, so I really, I'm on standby pretty great. much the day. Um, and that's and different. Do, Go ahead. I'm sorry. 
No, it's okay. So, I mean, I can just remember on Friday, one of my teachers came to me and she wanted to collaborate, you know, Mm -hmm. so she had her Google Doc open. What can I do here? You know, kind of asking me questions. And then I had to go do something for a student because I also help the students as well with their technology. And, you know, so we could collaborate on that Google Doc, even though I had to be there for a student. So Mm -hmm. there's a lot of digital collaboration and Mm -hmm. collab communication via email or Google Docs, those Google cool. tools. Um, so basically, you know, I am on standby, but also I do do the appointments. And if if an administrator reaches out to me and says, hey, this teacher needs help with classroom management, you know, I kind of go and assess the situation, pre-assessment, look out, you know, talk to him. I go observe him or her, you know, I said him just yeah. because I saying that, and then follow up. And so there is the coaching cycle when my administrators say it is necessary. Got it. A lot of teachers invite me. Last week they had a certain activity going on. Uh, After the Odyssey, they read the book. They had a Greek celebration. You know, she invited me to come in to see their reports and their reflections. And then also they cook, you know, they had to create an original Greek dish or something. So I'm, I'm always getting invited to classrooms and see what they're doing. Um, a lot of our teachers are using, we have iPads, so the, the creativity aspect with the iPads in their classroom. So they always, you know, like to show off and share with me their things that they're doing in their classroom. So it's a different day just because I don't have a set schedule. Yeah. But I'm always busy in a, and on standby. That's um, great. Yeah, I mean, teacher coaches wear lots of different roles or, or, or wear different hats and support teachers in lots of different ways. So it sounds like you do participate in that, you know, kind of the more formal coaching cycle, but you're also very available to teachers to work with them on a need-by-need basis, which is great. So it sounds like teachers, too, are really open and excited to to work with you. How do you get teachers to that point where they're really like, yeah, let's do some coaching work together? Because I know that can kind of be tricky Mm -hmm. for coaches. Well, and and I was going to say that earlier, and then I kind of got sidetracked. Sorry. Yeah, it's okay. Um, But basically, you know, building those relationships, seeing relationships with the teacher, seeing where that teacher is individually. Um, We have a wide range of teachers, new teachers coming in. I think we had five or six this year. Um, You know, our school is growing. So next year we're proposed to have five or six, probably more, you know, one per department. Um, So just seeing those teachers and see where they are in their practices in their classroom. Also, I do a lot of integration of the technology. So seeing where they are with their technology skills. So I like to, last year, I was really great at it, meet with every teacher like the first week or two of school Uh just to get to know them on a personal level. Mm -hmm. You know, if they have any children, their hobbies, you know, what do they do at school? Do they coach also sports as well? Because that plays a big, you know, impact on it. Obviously, the football coaches and the volleyball coaches in the fall are tied down. You know, they really... You know, they're focused on teaching during the day and then coaching at night. So really, I like to get to know the teachers in an individual level. And we have to differentiate as coaches as well, just like we do if we have a classroom. So what works for teacher A might not work for teacher B. Um, Maybe there's a group of teachers that are, you know, they love professional development. They love learning. But then, you know, other teachers down the hall might not like that. You know, they might like you know, just a book to read in the afternoon instead of going to a conference. So you have to really get to know them in an individual Mm -hmm. level or maybe, you know, the science departments, you know, see how they like to learn or Mm -hmm. see what they're doing in their classroom because it just depends on every teacher and every, you know, it's so individualized. And so that's kind of where I, my model of coaching kind of came in to meet each teacher where they are and then help them with ever what they need, whatever they need. So, so smart. Natalie, yeah. with so much going on in your schedule as a coach, how do you stay organized and manage all your time? Well, I definitely said Google a lot. Um, I'm a big proponent of Google. So my calendar, I wish I could screen share you. I don't know how yeah. to do that. Skype, Skype's okay. kind of new to me. Um, but I document everything on my Google calendar. So if I meet with teacher A at 8.30 to 9, and then I go and I have a webinar later on the day. I watch a lot of webinars or save them for my teachers. Um, So I just document everything. And even um, right now I'm um, booking professional development for other teachers. You know, so I take care of all their travel. I'm kind of like a travel agent as well. That's another hat I, I wear. 
Um, but it's fun, you know, because I can follow up after they go to the conference or after the professional development and see if they enjoyed it, if they would recommend it. So we kind of have a reflection after that, mm -hmm. the professional development. So I just track everything in a Google Doc okay. uh, or a Google Calendar and then other things like a Google Doc if I'm calling somebody to ask about, you know, Skyping with them for mm -hmm. a lesson, you know, in class. So I, I try to keep everything organized last year. I was really great about, you know, documenting the teacher, kind of what we talked about or yeah. if we collaborated on a lesson. This year, I just kind of been using Google Calendar okay. and documenting that. Now, in my inbox, I save a lot of emails. Okay. So I have different labels or they're known as, a lot of people call them folders. Yeah. So and I have different departments, you know, if this is a curriculum thing, if this is a classroom management, yeah. this is a webinar, just to stay organized. And yes. like I said, I, I I subscribe to a lot of websites and professional development things, so I'm always constantly learning new ideas yeah. for my teachers. So I can't document all those emails every day, but I can save them as reference for day, yes. for other days or when a teacher needs them. That's great. So. All right, Natalie, so for those coaches who are just starting out, you know, they're either it's their first year or second year, they're just transitioning into their new role. What advice would you give to them to to support this tra a successful transition for them? That's a great question. I think what I was saying earlier is building the relationships with those mm -hmm. teachers. Definitely start from day one. I think I even started a little earlier. Um, so my role was going to start in August, and I actually started professional development in June and July. You know, just getting to know those teachers, yeah. share the services that I have. Um, so we do summer workshops, and I'm not sure if that's ideal for every school or you know that's just something unique to us in Louisiana but building those relationships sending out an email I sent a welcome email to our new teachers last summer oh, and great. you know I, I heard a lot of great things about that like thank you so much you were my go-to person you know and I put my cell phone number on there you know and and they text me just having that open relationship yeah. I find um, with our job you know obviously we want to come home and relax but if they know as a teacher that they can count on someone and it's not as intimidating as contacting the administrator, I think you'll have a lot of buy-in if that relationship or those doors are always open. That's right. Um, I would agree. Uh, go, ahead. go ahead. Yeah, I was just going to say that I agree 100%. You know, I think teachers really need to see you as a teacher too mm -hmm. and not as an evaluator and someone who they're really going to feel in com feel comfortable with having in, having you in their classroom. Um, is, is so important. So I think that welcome email at the beginning of the year, letting them get to know you as a person are really key first steps in building that relationship. So really Definitely. great job. What um, were you going to say, Natalie? Uh, and uh, I was just going to say, you know, document your calendar so that you can share that with your administrator. You know, if he or she, you know, ever is wondering, you know, how much do you do during the day? Yeah. You know, or just having that as a back, um, as a piece to follow yes. back on. Yes. Um, reach out or learn to others. You know, I've this whole social media world, you know, it's crazy what students, you know, our high schoolers are doing with Twitter, but really as an educational standpoint, how many people that I've connected with over Twitter from all around the world, you know, in the United mm -hmm. States, you know, and I've even met some of the people that I follow on Twitter in person. And it's really an inspiring thing because they share so many great ideas. Um, and I was going to say the Twitter chat, on Wednesday night. I mean, I can't make it every Wednesday, mm -hmm. but just, you know, maybe making on Thursday morning an hour or so to go through those archives okay. of the chat just to learn something new or maybe reach out. Um, just this year, you know, this instructional coach in Texas reached out to me and we've collaborated on documents together, collaborated on PD. Since cool. I'm the only instructional coach at my school, you know, I, I need somebody to fall back on and maybe rely on to look at something for me before I present or share it with the teachers. So just having those, the network of instructional coaches out there that yeah. are fine with doing that, I think that's a really great thing. Um, Jim Knight, he has some great things on his website. Okay. You know, your website is great for new coaches, I think. Um, and just save resources and webinars because you might not know um, five years from now, I might meet a teacher and a webinar I found when I first started coaching, you know, is relevant to them. So I just mm -hmm. think all those things, the relationships, the resources, mm -hmm. professional development, all that, you know, as a new coach, you might get overwhelmed, but mm -hmm. reach out to other coaches. Yes. You know, some of, 
some of the coaches have been doing this for, you know, 10 years now. I don't know. Mm-hmm. How, but there's some really great people on social media that can reach out and help um, in your field. Such great advice that, you know, the piece about building relationships early and often, documenting your work, um, as, as you kind of described earlier in the interview, through through Google, through your calendar in a variety of different ways. And then the last piece you said was really trying to build that network of other coaches. And Natalie, I know, does such a great job, as she shared of that through Twitter. And it's going to be my goal to be more active on Twitter, like Natalie, because she's right. There's so many people who you can connect with and build relationships with and learn from. And Natalie, you mentioned that Wednesday night Twitter chat I know would be a good resource for coaches. So I can add that to the show notes in case anyone's interested in being a part of that. And Jim Knight, you know, I think for many of us, is his resources can be really supportive as well. Definitely. Any last pieces you wanted to to share that you felt like were missed? I don't think so. I'm just, you know, I think as an instructional coach, you are a teacher. Mm-hmm. And you should never forget that. Um, you know, still to this day, you know, I kind of miss the classroom. But then, you know, a teacher invites me into their classroom and everything's better. I think that was a lot of my worries the first the first year. Oh, I'm going to miss my second graders. You know, I'm going to miss being a part of that classroom environment. Um, And I think, you know, just think of your instructional coaching role as a teacher. You're helping a teacher with all her other students, you know, with her students in her class. So I just think, you know, never forget that you are a teacher that's and right. you are there to help others and help the students ultimately. So. I love that, Natalie. I know that's hard for lots of us. I'm going to miss my kids. And for me, too, it's hard for me to just call myself a coach because I still very much see myself as a teacher as well. So it's almost like they need to mesh those two those two titles, coach and teacher, to something that, that incorporates yes. both of them. But, yes, very well said. And I think that's a good spot for us to wrap up this morning, Natalie. I just want to say thank you so much again for being so generous with sharing some of your time with us, the Miss Hauser community, and myself this morning. You shared so much thoughtful advice and really kind of tangible tips for that I think are really going to be helpful to all of us. So thank you so much. Well, thank you for inviting me. Absolutely. If anyone wanted to kind of connect with you, Natalie, or had any follow-up questions for you, what would be the best place to find you? Um, I think definitely Twitter. I check that a lot. So our handle or the at sign NMS8400. Okay. Um, And also maybe um, um, I guess you would put like my email or something maybe on this video. Um, They can definitely email me my personal email and then also my school email. I check that often. Okay. I will add that to the show notes in case they wanted to follow up with you at all. Um, Thanks, everyone, for being a part of this conversation today. Um, I'm really looking forward to having more conversations just like this in the future and to keeping the the learning going. If you'd like to get signed up for more of these chats or more information on instructional coaching, please make sure you check out MissHauser.com and sign up there. I'll talk to you guys soon. Bye.